In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the peace of Jesus be with all of us. My brothers and sisters, we continue the reading of the Bible. We just arrived on chapter 17 of the book of Genesis. May God bless us, my dear friends. Amo Marie Louise, Amo Manarongo. When Abraham was 19 nine years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm the Almighty God. Obey me and always do what is right. I will make my covenant with you and give you my many descendants. Abraham bowed down with his face touching the ground, and God said, I make this covenant with you. I promise that you will be the ancestor of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abraham, but Abraham. Because I am making you the ancestor, ancestor of many nations. I will give you many descendants, and some of them will be kings, You will have so many descendants that they will become nations. I will keep my promise to you and to your descendants in future generations and everlasting covenant. I will be your God and the God of your descendants. I will give to you and to your descendants this land in which you are now a foreigner. The whole land of Canaan will belong to your descendants forever, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, to Abraham, you also must agree to keep the covenant with me, both you and your descendants in the future generations. You and your descendants must all agree to some circumcise every male among you. From now on, you must circumcise every, every baby boy when he is eight days old, including slaves born in your homes and slaves bought from foreigners. This will show that There is a covenant between you and me. Each one must be circumcised, and this will be a physical sign to show that my covenant with you is everlasting. Any male who has no be, who has not been circumcised will no longer be considered one of my people because he had. He has not kept the covenant with me. God says to Abraham, to Abraham, you must no longer call your wife Sarah, Sarai. From now, her name is Sarah. I will bless her, and I will give you a son, a son by her. I will bless her and she will become the mother of nations, and there will be kings among her descendants. Abraham bowed down with his face touching the ground, but he began to laugh when he thought, 
can can a man have a child when he is he is a hundred years old can sarah have a child at nine ninety ninety he asked god why not let ismail be my my hair but god said no your wife sarah will will bear you a son and you will name him isaac i will keep my covenant with him and with him and with the, with his descendants forever it is an everlasting covenant i have had your request about ishmael so i will bless him and give him many children and many descendants he will be the father of 12 prince uh, of 12 princes and i will make a great nation of his descendants but i will keep my covenant with your son isaac who will be born to sarah about this time next year when god finished speaking to abraham he left him on that same date abraham obeyed god and circumcised his son ishmael and all the other males in his household including the slaves born in his home and those he he had the boat abraham was nine years old when he was circumcised and his son ishmael was 13. they were both circumcised on the same day together with the old abraham's slaves Let us continue the reading with chapter 18. A son is promised to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham at the sacred trees of Mamre. As Abraham was sitting in the entrance of his tent during the hottest part of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing there. As soon as he saw them, he ran out to, to meet them. Bowing down with his face touching the ground, he said, Sirs, please do not pass by my home without stopping. I'm here to serve you. Let me bring some water for you to wash your feet. You can rest here beneath this tree. I will also bring a bit of food it will give you strength to continue your journey you have honored me by coming to my home so let me serve you they replied thank you we accept abraham hurried into the tent and said to sarah quick take a sack of your best flour and bake for some bread then he ran to the herd and picked out a calf, a calf that was tender and fat, and gave it to a servant who had to get it ready. He took some cream, some milk, and the meat, and set the food before the, the men. Then under the tree he served him, them himself, and they ate. Then they asked him, Where is your wife Sarah? She's there in the tent, he answered. One of them said, 
nine months from now i will come back and you your wife sarah will have a son sarah was behind him at the door at the tent listening abraham and sarah were very old and sarah was had stopped having her monthly periods so sarah laughed to her to herself and said now that i'm old and and worn out can i still enjoy sex and beside my husband is old too then the lord asked abraham why did sarah laugh and say can i have can i really have a child when i'm so old is anything too hard for the lord as i said nine months from now i will return and sarah will have a son because sarah was afraid she denied it i didn't laugh she said yes you did he replied you laughed abraham prayed for sodom Then the men left and went to a place where they could look down at Sodom and Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said to himself, I will not hide from Abraham what I'm going to do. His descendants will become a great and mighty nation and through him I will bless all the nations. I have chosen him in order that he may command his sons and his descendants to obey me and to do what is right and just. If they do, I will do everything for him that I have promised. Then the Lord said to Abraham, There is terrible accusation against Sodom and Gomorrah, and their sin is very great. I must do that. I must go down to find out whether or not the accusation which I have heard are true. Then the two men left and went on the toward Sodom, but the road remained with Abraham. Abraham approached the Lord and asked. Are you really going to destroy the innocent with the, the guilty? If there are 50 innocent people in the city, will you destroy the whole city? Won't you spare it in order to save the, the 50? Surely you won't kill the innocent with the guilty. That is impossible. You can't do that. If you did, the innocent would be punished along with the guilty. That is impossible. The judge of all the earth has no act justly. The Lord answered, If I find 50 innocent people in Sodom, I will spare the whole city for their sake. Abraham spoke again. Please forgive, forgive my boldness in continuing to speak to you, Lord. I'm only a man and have no right to say anything. But perhaps there will be only 45 innocent people instead of 50. Will you destroy the whole city because, of, because there are five too few? The Lord answered, I will not destroy the city if I find 45 innocent people. Abraham spoke again, perhaps there will be only 40. He replied, I will not destroy it if if there are 40. Abraham said, please don't be angry, Lord, but I must speak again. What if they are only 30? He said, I know to do 
do it if I find the thirty. Abraham said, Please forgive my boldness and continue to speak to you, Lord. Suppose that only twenty are found. He said, I will not destroy the city if I find twenty. Abraham said, Please don't be angry, Lord, and I will speak just once more. What if only ten are found? He said, I will not destroy it if there are ten. After he had finished speaking with Abraham, the Lord went away and Abraham returned home. The word of God. My brothers and sisters, the city was destroyed because God couldn't find even ten people who please his name. That is why we have to correct ourselves so that the time of God will come to our mountains, our villages, he will find us holy, he will find us pleasing his name so that we will save the whole the whole nation, the whole area of our or ours. May God bless us in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.